north coast of California is home to one of the oldest rainforests on the planet. But despite decades of effort to save the ancient redwoods, private timber corporations are still cutting them down. My name is Remedy, and in 2001, I joined the struggle to defend these natural wonders from an economic system that continues to destroy forests. In 1986, a Texas corporation called Maxam took over California's Pacific Lumber Company. From a high-rise in Houston, Maxam CEO Charles Hurwitz ordered a massive increase in logging, and the big trees began falling at an unprecedented rate. Ancient forests were clear-cut and invasive species moved in. Due to faster logging, erosion filled in streams and rivers. Downstream residents lost water sources. Swimming holes filled with sediment and salmon populations declined. The area where I'm standing, directly behind me here, uh, always in my childhood, was a six to eight feet deep pool that we swam in. And now it's a log jam. I remember coming down here with my brother quite a few times in junior high and high school on the weekends and in the summer and catching some fairly nice trout. So salmon used to spawn in here. There were three or four reds uh, salmon spawning. But over the uh, last two or three years, we've had a lot of aggradation in here. Complaints were filed in numbers, but government agencies invariably sided with Maxam. Excessive logging continued at an unsustainable rate. Maxam routinely broke the law with their high-speed logging. Hundreds of violations were committed, and residents began tracking water quality. The spot that I'm standing right now, <clears throat> when we first moved in here, was uh, between four and five feet deep. You can see now that where I'm standing is approximately four inches deep. I've got a six-foot probe here, and the probe goes bottomed out. In coming down here today and looking at the stream, it has gotten even worse in the last couple of years. Millions of pounds of sediment clogged salmon-bearing streams, and frequent flooding damaged resident properties. Insurance rates skyrocketed. This year our flood insurance rate went from 540 to $1,800 and, I don't know, $1,860, somewhere around there. How's, it, how's your place looking? Well, I haven't been over there. Can't get to it. Can't get to it. People couldn't get to and from their homes as roads began to flood after normal rainfall. The river was comp completely over the bridge. I had to buy a a, a 12-foot uh, rowboat. It's a, it's a folding boat, which I can put on my car. Houses had to be raised or moved to higher ground. Our house flooded. The health department told us that we had to wear rubber gloves and protective clothing to guard against contamination, um, septic contamination, when we were cleaning up. Humboldt County residents tried every legal option available to protect their homes, but still deforestation continued. The California Department of Forestry, in an act of corporate loyalism, told bewildered residents their watersheds needed more logging, not less. Scientists came out with lengthy reports that showed logging was causing permanent damage by not allowing time for recovery. Endangered species lost vital habitat. The clear-cutting increased landslides and flooding and needed to be significantly slowed or stopped. All around the world, deforestation is considered a direct cause of mudslides and flooding. Yet government and industry officials in the U.S. regularly deny this basic fact. They instead attribute negative effects of logging to acts of God. In reaction to ongoing destruction of the forest, tree sits began popping up in areas marked for cut. Following Northern California's 15-year tradition of nonviolent civil disobedience, activists took to the treetops in record numbers. In the old-growth redwoods of Humboldt County, tree villages were built high above the ground. In the hillsides above the small town of Freshwater, where 97 properties are directly affected by increased flooding, I climbed into the branches of a 1,200-year-old redwood called Jerry and didn't come down for a year. from Olympia, Washington. I was just living and working and up there, you know, it's like Olympia is, once upon a time, was an old growth forest. It was mainly, you know, Douglas fir and cedar trees, but it was old growth forest, which is now you could be standing in cement and look around for blocks and not see anything sticking up but a parking meter. And that was really alarming to me. I feel like I have felt a pain, a sadness from the earth, you know, my whole life. And I think that we all felt it as children, but we are conditioned away from that. We're conditioned away from our, our feelings so that we can continue, so that this can continue, so that we can have smokestacks, you know, spewing pollution up into the air 24 hours a day and, you know, drive our cars around. It definitely takes a certain amount of denial. 
This is an ancient redwood tree that's over a thousand years old that deserves to live. It's older than capitalism. It's older than the system that's trying to cut it down. And so I came up here to defend it. Because it's not just one person sitting up here in a tree that's resisting this. I mean, there are so many people that keep even one tree set up. You're welcome! I love you! It takes a community to keep even one tree set going. And the fact that we have nearly 20 in the county right now tells you that this is a very informed community. They know what's going on. It's, it's very critical for people to rise up right now and to step into um, action right now because the system is failing. It's proving that it is failing. Rocking good time up here today. Hey, Usoda and Dream, are you there? Yeah. Through high winds, record rainfall, and the challenges of never touching ground, my tree sit was a vigil in protest of this state sanctioned destruction. By March of 2003, more than 20 tree sits stood in joyful defiance of Maxam's liquidation logging. Young activists living high in the trees lived in a world of breathtaking beauty. We formed relationships with the natural world and experienced the magic of living with a being more than a thousand years old. If you come with me, I will offer you my hand. It's empty but it is full of fire. Cause I'll be a lamp for a service. Private timber companies want to do it there. Please, 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 but we say these hills are not for sale. No, 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 no. These hills are not for sale. Yes, because we fight for the trees, for the trees, for the trees, for the trees now. Cause we will fight for the trees to be free, to be free, to be free now. With the media and public attention focused on the U.S. invasion of Iraq, Maxam began daily raids on the tree sits in freshwater. Teams of climbers, led by Eric Schatz of Schatz Tree Service, arrived to forcibly remove activists from the trees. Starting on March 17th, the Humboldt County Sheriff's Department aided Maxam by illegally shutting down the public road that ran along the tree sits. Bystanders, as well as journalists, were arrested as they attempted to witness and document the extractions. Back off, please. Back away from the patrol car. After 361 days without touching the ground, I was forcibly removed from the tree, arrested, and taken to jail. You have anything to say, Remedy? It's been a long time since you've been on the ground, almost a year. Time to stop cutting ancient trees. Now some may say, namaste. Some say, a home for top Some say, all other say, shalom. But we all talk about her, our own respect her, protect her. Now rise up, rise up.
While I sat in jail, tree sitters reoccupied Jerry and the struggle continued. Day after day, tree sitters were forced down from the trees. Okay, here we are back at um, the tree that Anna Perna is in. And they're probably about to start grinding her out. What are they doing? What are they doing? Looks like zip ties. They're cutting on the tree, and I repeat, their Pacific lumber is cutting the tree I am in. On this day, while a tree sitter watched from above, a logger severed the living layer around the circumference of the trunk, spitefully killing the tree. Three days after my arrest, climber Eric and his team returned to Jerry. Another tree sitter, called Amity, had climbed to take my place. It's too dangerous! Don't do it! You're gonna kill her! There's uh, climbers going up into this tree after this woman who's at the very top of the tree. They are recklessly endangering her life, and I want to know if anyone's gonna do anything about it. Stop it! It's too tall! It's not strong enough! Well, I, I was extracted out of a tree, so I don't agree with that. that they're, not, they're not taking the utmost care, especially when they're tying people's hands and feet together when they're lowering them down. It's on a tiny limb at the top. That truck is getting She has no harness on! And she's not safe in! Amity stood at the very top of the tree in an effort to evade climbers. Schatz told Amity he would take her down no matter what, and that if she fell, he and his climbers would testify she committed suicide. Police reports contained one-sided versions based on reports from Maxam's climbers, who were paid $70,000 for the first week of extractions. With reckless disregard for her life, Eric Schatz dangerously removed her from the top of the tree. Upon her eviction, Schatz hauled up a chainsaw and viciously cut the limbs off the 1,200-year-old redwood. Battered but still alive, Jerry was again reoccupied as activists refused to give up the fight. In a society based on domination, violence against nature and violence against women stem from the same cultural illness. Through searching public documents, it was learned Eric Schatz has a history of domestic violence. In 1992, he was arrested after he fractured a bone in his wife's throat. In addition, court documents list numerous episodes of violence toward his daughters. Remaining tree sitters watched helplessly as the forest was cut down all around them. Some trees fell dangerously close to the tree sits. Every year, Maxim clear cuts the equivalent of 500 acres in freshwater watershed alone. In Elk River watershed, they clear cut 600 acres. 
This unsustainable rate of cut exploits both timber workers who face eventual layoffs and the forests that face species extinction and irreversible damage. Down into the valley, rolling on the Back in the lower village, we have climbers and Jezebel. Hey! Tree sit extractions happened in the midst of active deforestation. Industrial logging is the second most dangerous job in terms of on-the-job mortality. Corporate management demands profit first. Safety concerns of activists, climbers, and timber workers are secondary. Accidents do happen. On this day, workers scrambled to clean up a shattered tree accidentally dropped across the public road. Unbeknownst to tree sitters, hidden cameras were mounted on the helmets of climbers as they carried out the evictions. By the way, what, what's your name? Through criminal proceedings, a copy of Eric's helmet cam footage was obtained. Marcus, Marcus, Marcus. The true nature of the evictions okay. was captured up close, 160 yeah. feet above the ground. Well, if you guys weren't up here, I wouldn't have to risk myself and, or anything. Wouldn't have to risk you guys. Yeah, that's what it's all about. I wouldn't be up here if you guys weren't up here. I wouldn't be up here if you guys weren't up here. Wouldn't have to risk you guys. You know, they'll complain about, oh, how we jeopardized them. You're lucky nobody yeah. got hurt on you, Jerry. We're, we're careful. Well, there are people like, in the woods there, you know? Well, we had, people, we had people in the woods, too, making sure that everything was safe. We're, we're careful. Everything was safe. Are you using pain compliance on me? No. Gonna, like, no, 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 no. You know what? Like I said, I, I'm going to tell you right now that we are going to take very good care of you. We're not going to hurt you. Nobody, we don't want... Don't worry, Marcus. We're going to be very, very careful. After a conversation between Marcus and Eric Schatz, PL climbers began to cut him out of his lockbox. Another activist, called Phoenix, free-climbed the 160 feet to the platform to observe the extraction. The climbers immediately grabbed Phoenix, who struggled to get away. Let him go! 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 What we need to do? Uh, no. Fuck uh, hold on, hold on. Fuck off me! How do you employ this guy, Sam? Look what he's doing! Step we're, on me! We're I'm trying secure. to get, We're trying to get you security. So you're not gonna. Uh, Come on, let us save you. No, you're fucking hurting me. I'm trying to you save you. You're fucking hog time in. No, I, I'm safe. Let go on I'm fucking safe hog tied. Holy shit, I'm in a tree. I know how to we're, climb. We are going That's to rescue you. That's how I'm you. safe. You we're, take away my limbs. We're going to rescue you. Take away my limbs and I'm not safe. We're going to rescue you. No pepper spray. Like I said, you, you're hearing a lot of stories that aren't true. You know, you really are. I, you know, I'm, I'm polite with people. I'm direct with people. I'm honest. I tell you what I will do, what I won't do. You know, and I'll stand by that. Now get up here. Man, and do my leg. It hurts. Come on. You're cutting off the circulation. Come on. You are not being around. You tried to knock us off here. Hey, fucker. You know I didn't. Come on. Bullshit. Oh, you are acting. kosher. You are acting suicidal. Oh, 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 okay, I'm coming up. You coming up? You gonna cause me any trouble? Hey, whoa, whoa, don't what do you mean? Up. I get that rope on you. Okay, then you sit right here. You're fine right there. Just, okay, sit there. Just sit there. Hey, man, what the fuck are you doing? He's trying to make you safe. You guys are not making me safe. You're cutting no. my leg. No. So I can assure you, six ways from Sunday, anything that happens up here will be safe. It will be courteous, you know. I mean, we, we do everything by the book and then some. Dude, my leg, come on. Well, come on, get your legs up here and we Dude, can... No, no, he tried to put a foot around my fucking neck. Like I said, standards for uh, rescue, you know, are... They're almost redundant in safety. 
Yeah. No, he's not. He, he, wants to put it, he wants to put it. He wants to put it around your waist. Care what he wants. That's what he did. But because I am so concerned about safety for all you guys, that we exceed the safety standards, just because we want to make sure you guys all get through this. You cut off the circulation. No, you did. You dove out oh, down there. I didn't do it. Get up here. Quit saying it was me. Back up, I guess there's kind of a mutual respect. Like I said, I respect and admire you guys. And when I get up here one on one with you guys, you know, we have we talk like this and, and it's really great. Ox, ox, guys. Ox, keep your man in check. Get that rope around me. Keep your man in check. Did you see him jump on me? That's not cool. You got the girls too? Marcus, don't be unhooking stuff. I don't know what you're we're trying to hurt him. We're not trying to hurt him. We're trying to save his life. He comes up here yelling and he's suicidal. He starts thrashing around. He almost knocked us off the platform. He was trying to climb to the top of the tree. Don't let him take you. No, man. It's fucking. I'm not letting you. Ah! Ah! Right, come on. Ah! Come on. You, you got to get off. got to get off. This is getting out of hand, Marcus, and you're helping it. Hey, you're the one cutting off his circulation. No, no, this is out of hand, and you know it. You know it. You cannot justify this. I didn't do anything to you. You gotta get off. You gotta get off. You gotta get off. I know we're trying to contain him. I'm trying. Get the fuck off me! I can't. You gotta get off him. Come on, pull back up here. We're losing slack on that. Alright. What the fuck? What the fuck? Alright, get it back here. Okay, well, where's the other one? Do you know where the other zip tie is? Do you know where the zip tie is? Don't, don't choke him. Get, give him air. Give him air. Just hold him. Uh, you fucking choke him. What do you think that does? You know, you human anatomy? Uh, uh, it was free. It's fucking all. It's free. That's not your safety. Thanks for choking me, safety man. Yeah, Grandpa, we got a hell of a mess up here. He's trying to get this guy secured. You're breaking my arm. Fuck off me. Roger that. Okay. Where am I? Where am I? You got something wrong with you, ox. There's something wrong with you, ox. Fucking mess. Okay. Okay. I still can't feel my leg. I zip ties are a joke. Fuck it, I'm damn exaggerating. You're fucking killing me. And I have a non-violent code that I, I do not want to ever hurt any of you guys. I can't. My throat! Come on, come on. Take my, you have my arms, please. Let my throat go. Okay. You have my arms! Okay, give him a 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 Give him Let's come on. Let's let's work together here. Let's come on. Let's let's work together here. Let's let's work together. Sorry, General. Yeah. Don't be sorry. You guys. I mean, you guys do a hell of a job. I said I admire what you guys try to do. After both men were forcibly removed, Maxam Pacific Lumber cut down the giant redwood, a tree six times older than the state of California. Phoenix was charged with a felony assault with a deadly weapon, while Ox and Eric went on to evict more tree sitters. On June 17th, a tree sitter was extracted from Jerry for the third time. The activist, called Smokey, locked down to a 600-pound barrel of cement. In another dangerous spectacle, Max Am's climbers lowered Smokey and the concrete barrel to the ground. A 
Other activists stood on traverse lines between the trees, preventing Jerry from being cut. While tree sitting as a tactic brings attention to the issue of old growth logging, it alone is not the answer to ongoing deforestation. Maxam Pacific Lumber continues to destroy our watersheds with a reckless rate of cutting, even while facing multiple lawsuits, including charges of fraud and racketeering. Citizens continue to rise up in resistance to the destruction, both in the courts and in the trees. have been doing this flooding oh since 95 since about 95 how long have you been trapped uh since uh seven o'clock this morning do you have enough supplies not really because i had planned to go into town today and i have to go to work tomorrow and i don't have any clue how i'm going to get there uh, run a 20th 20, 20 second and then we had one right not a few days later just, just last week and then the one today So this is the end result of a industrial, corporate industrial logging process which includes clear cutting, burning and the spraying of herbicides and diesel fuel to control what grows back. Come down here, you come at your own risk. 